everybody welcome back to my channel so in today's video I'm focusing this time on drawing noses and again this is going to be in two parts so today is part one and I'm going to be focusing on drawing the first two noses so the top two so the first nose I'm drawing is the baby's nose and I'm doing this again all in Caran d'Ache Luminance color pencils and the first thing I'm doing is taking the brown ochre pencil and I'm using this to establish where the shadows are in the nose so because it's a baby's nose, it's very smooth and there's also quite a lot of light tones and more pale tones. So I tried not to use any dark or really harsh colours apart from on the nostrils. And I tried to keep everything as smooth as possible by keeping my pencil really, really sharp and also by using circular motions that overlap. So I'm just using circular motions to apply the pencil and I'm applying it very lightly because we're going to be doing this nose using lots and lots of layers. So I don't want to damage the tooth of the paper, therefore I'm going really, really light on that colour pencil. So I like doing this step just because it lets me know quite early on where all the shadows are and I've got more of a finalised version of what it could look like in my mind because you can see where all the highlights should be, all the shadows are and then you can just kind of build on that, add the different colours and really make it look realistic. So once I've done that with the brown ochre, I go in with the sepia, which is a dark brown, even though it looks black, it was a brown colour, and I use this on the nostrils. I try to avoid using black as much as possible on the nostrils, just because it's quite a flat colour, so I like to use dark browns instead, or glaze the black with something like a burnt sienna, just to give it a bit more of a richness to it, so it's not so flat. I also use a bit of that step here to mark in some of the more shadowed parts, so underneath the nose and also just around where a bit of the contours and bumps on the nose was. But again, I didn't apply much pressure to this at all, I used the side of the pencil and I just used this to glaze the colour over the top. So in order to get a three dimensional look to your drawing, it's really important to get the contrast right. So this is the difference between the highlights and the shadows. So getting the perfect colour doesn't matter so much as it does with the contrast, so the contrast is really really important. If you have your shadows at the right depth and darkness and then your highlights at the correct brightness, it will really pop and look three dimensional. Whereas if you just have all the correct colours but you don't do the contrast, so you don't have your highlights bright enough or your darks dark enough, then it will look flat and not very, and it won't really pop out of the paper as much. Okay, so once I've done that, I go in with the Burnt Ochre 50% and this has more of a warm hue to it. So I'm using this to add some more of a tone and a hue to the skin, so the undertones of the skin. So the baby had quite warm undertones, so I'm using that to glaze over where some of those richer golden tones was. And then I also go in with the Burnt Sienna and I use this to add some more depth to the nostrils. So I'm also added a bit of that burnt sienna in other parts of the nose as well. And it will depend on your reference photo where you want to put each of these colours. So really look at your reference photos and figure out where are the darker regions and which parts of the nose has more of those golden tones. Or if it's cool tones, like in the drawing that I'll be doing next, so the next nose, then you want to add more of the burnt siennas rather than the burnt ochres. Because the burnt siennas are more pinkish and cool tones, whereas the burnt ochres are more warmer tones. So now I'm going in with the Burnt Sienna 50% and I'm just using that again on the shadowed regions. So I am using a lot of different colours but this really builds up the dimension and adds a realistic look because skin has a lot of different colours in it, it's not just one or two different colours. So it's really important that you make this translate in your work by using lots and lots of different shades. So now once I've got all the tones laid down that I want, I start to add more pressure using the Burnt Ochre 10%. And so this is the lightest of the Burnt Ochres. And I really like using this to add more pressure and to blend all the colours together. And for the highlighted regions, I then like to go over those areas with a layer of the White Luminance colour pencil. Because this lightens it and it also smooths it out a lot and it's a really nice colour to use to get those highlights. 
but you don't want to put it straight white so you use it over those layered colours that you already applied. So again I'm going throughout all of the nose just applying that burnt ochre 10% and I'm using this with a bit more pressure to really blend and smooth the colours together. But on this paper, so I'm using the 500 series Strathmore Bristol plate surface paper, it's really really easy to blend those coloured pencils together without much pressure at all. So once I use that burnt ochre to blend all the colours together, I'm going in with the raw umbers and I really like this on the shadowed regions because it has a nice greenish tone to it which has which is really common in undertones for skin. So it helps make it look realistic but it's also a great colour to do shadowed regions with because it looks really realistic rather than using say just dark browns or don't use a black for your shadows because that won't look realistic. So when I do my portraits I really like using wax based pencils so for here I'm using the Caran d'Ache Luminance colour pencils but I know a lot of you guys like to work with Prismacolor pencils so they are both wax based so they work very similar to each other and I just prefer using the Caran d'Ache Luminance colour pencils because I think they're better quality, they are light fast so if I sell my work I want them to be light fast so I've become comfortable and used to working with these and that's why I like to use these for my tutorials because that is what I'm most comfortable with and that's what gives me the best results so when I do tutorials I like to use the products that will give me the best results to show you guys if that makes sense. So I tried to do other tutorials with Prismacolors as much as possible but for the first tutorials on say the eyes and the noses I'd rather do them with the materials that I'm most confident with and I know how to use the most and so I might do another tutorial later on down the line of using Prismacolors to create eyes and noses and same with the Faber-Castell polychromos. Okay, so now I'm going through with the white Caran d'Ache Luminance colour pencil and I'm just using this with a bit of pressure to create the highlights. So look at your reference photo, it'll be different on every nose. So just look where the light is hitting the nose and there will always be a highlight region of the nose. It might not be as harsh as some others but there will be a highlight and it's normally down the middle of the nose, so the bridge of the nose and it could be at the tip as well. Now I'm just perfecting the details, adjusting colours to get them just how I want them and to look as close to a reference photo as possible. So for these noses I've done this first one as a light warm undertone skin and the female nose that I'm going to be doing in a minute is more of a cooler pale undertone skin and then the two that I'm doing next week I'm using darker tones and they are both going to be warm tones but they're going to be a darker shade of skin. Okay, so moving on to the next nose, and this is the female nose, and the first thing I'm doing is using that sepia colour to establish where the nostrils are, and also to line out where the shadows are. 
So I'm using the side of the pencil and I'm just using this to shade in very lightly using circular motions where the shadows are. And now I'm also using the raw umber to establish where the shadows are. So I can't stress enough how important it is to have your pencil sharp and also to use very light pressure and circular motions. If you want to have a smooth outcome, you really need to be careful and spend a lot of time applying the pencil. Colour pencil is not a fast medium whatsoever, it's a really, really slow medium to work in. So you need to make sure that you're committed to putting in a lot of hours in order to get a really realistic result because if you try and rush it, it's not going to look very good. Okay, so once I added the raw umber, I'm going in with the Burnt Sienna 10% and this is a really nice cool undertone and I'm using this to add some of the shadows. So I'm just looking at the nose and wherever it's the more shadowed regions, I'm just applying this Burnt Sienna 10%. And now I'm also going over with the raw umber 10% quickly just to add in a bit more tone to those shadowed regions where it looks like it needed more of that raw umber look. And then I just went in with the sepia to add in some of the more harsh shadows. And now I'm going in with the Burnt Ochre 10% and I'm using this to blend out all those colours and I'm adding a bit more pressure to really get a smooth look now. So with this nose I'm doing it slightly different than the other nose. So with the baby's nose I used a lot of light layers first and then I blended it out. But with this one I was trying to do less layers and get to a more finished result quicker because... I thought I'd give you guys a few different options of how you can approach it so if you don't have much time and you want to get to the result quicker even though I would rather apply lots of layers slower this is also a nice way to get to a finished result quite quickly because you're really laying it down first and you're getting that smooth look and then you can glaze colours over the top to make it more realistic to the final colour that you want. So once I added the burnt ochre and blended all of that out, I'm going in with the white colour pencil and I'm using this for the highlighted regions. And what I do with the burnt ochre is I like to apply a light layer of it to wherever the highlights was, so that when you add the white colour pencil it transitions nicely into the areas around it and doesn't just look like there's um, a big segregation between where you've put the white colour pencil and where you've put the burnt ochre, so it's more of a nice gradiated transition. And then once I've done that, I've got all the structure how I want it, so I've got my shadows where I want my shadows and my highlights where I need the highlights. So now it's just adjusting the colours, making it look as realistic as possible. If I need to pull up any highlights or put in any more shadows, I just go through and do that with the individual colours and I really make sure that I've got the undertones how I want them to be.
So as a general guideline, I really like using the burnt ochres for warm skin tones and I also like using the burnt siennas for cooler tones and I really like using the raw umbers for the shadowed regions and either the primrose colour or the white to blend out and do the highlights. So one thing that you really need to look into when you're doing coloured pencil drawing is the paper that you're using as well. So even if you have really good coloured pencils, you need to make sure that you're using a paper that is suitable for coloured pencil and is made to give you the look that you want. So if you want to do more textured work or more rougher work with like say for example animal portraits then you might want to go for something that has a slightly more textured finish so for example watercolor paper can be really good to do color pencil on because you can use solvent on it really well which means that you can get really good fur textures and stuff like that but if you want to do smooth portraits and get really really smooth skin then you might not want to use something that has more tooth you might you will want to use something that has more of a smoother plate surface finish like this paper does. So take as much time looking into what paper you want to use as you do picking your coloured pencils and working with them because not every paper is going to work for everyone, you need to figure out what works for you and what you like to work on. Depending on what your coloured pencil technique is and how you like to apply the pencil. So I'm just adding some details, adjusting the colours and getting everything as close to the reference photo as possible. So next week I'm going to be focusing on drawing a male nose and also an older person's nose. So if you are new to my channel and you're really enjoying these tutorials, feel free to subscribe because I have a lot more coming. So I'm going to be working on mouths and also facial hair, hair, all these different things. So if you're enjoying these tutorials, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on my future ones and also my future other videos as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I'll leave links to my social media sites in the description below and I'll have all of the colours that I use to do each of these noses. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!